Hello. I have no idea who's in here. I don't know shit about lives, y'all, so apologies for all the randomness that's probably going to happen today. Hopefully everybody can see and hear me. I don't know if y'all can or can't. Hi. How do I? I don't know nothing about nothing, guys. Like, oh, this is how I, ooh, okay. Look at me figuring shit out. Apologies for my children who don't know how to keep their voices down. We Puerto Rican in this house, so we loud. I do expect y'all to be quiet. Oh, you're good. I'm trying to see if I can figure out how to do this streaming stuff with this other app it's so complicated guys our destination i did that already okay did i do it i don't know i don't know i don't know if i'm doing it okay i think i'm live on twitch and facebook and youtube now as well as tiktok you thought you missed it nope you're right on time oh here we go let me Invite sent. Chatting about story. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Nice. Yes. Let me see. Let me put this volume up. Okay. All right. Let me see. I can hear you a little bit, but you're kind of, kind of coming in and out for me. I'll need to see up my nose and everything so you can hear me. Is this yes. better? Yes. <laughs> Yadi. Oh no. See my signal my signal sucks, you guys. That that was one of <laughs> is that my nurse is gonna be like, ha, you wanna go live? I don't think so. <laughs> wow, hello everyone. Welcome. 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 Wow, there's a lot of people. Holy crap. Okay. Um, I'm not nervous. Oh, <laughs> We're just waiting. Okay, real quick. It says live paused. I'm I'm really sorry. Okay. Okay. I can do like because Teary eyes, who's red? Let's 
seems like you're coming in and out, Itu. It might be because I'm trying to stream every time. Do you think it's... I'm like closing all of all of the internet other than TikTok. <laughs> Can can y'all hear me at all? Mm. Is it a little bit better or is it am I still coming in and out? You're it's a little bit better. Okay. Yes. Because I closed out of all the other all the other apps. Oh good. Okay. What happens when you live in BFE, Florida? Your internet. <laughs> I have I have my tea ready to go. We got pito, everyone got their crackers and their mantequilla or whatever snacky snack y'all y'all want. <laughs> From water. Wow. I don't see her in here. This is beautiful. We're just waiting for one more person, everyone. Waiting for one more person to come in. Let's see here. It's like a, it's like a house party. It is. That's that how you like know house party. And everyone was like, they're not talking about shit. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about tea. We're talking about. I'd like to welcome everyone here again today. Yep. Um, is it um now itu are you on your you're on your phone right yeah is I didn't it know if I from the computer is uh the wi-fi better or is it uh if you want to go on your data oh if i go on my data i'm gonna be gone <laughs> my signal i have like i don't have any cell service where i live so i <laughs> I have to use my Wi-Fi. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I, I mean it when I say I'm in BFE, Florida. Like, I'm in BFE. We won't over here. Cut off jeans. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> welcome. Welcome, everyone. You're so wonderful. For Hi, everyone. Now, my phone is right up to my face. I'm like right here. I talked to let out all my stress, so I took my wife out the door. Me. Okay. So maybe I should move back a little bit if that affects the sound. So y'all can see my. Um, my threads here. My little pattern design. Is your hair? I thought I saw. What is it? Is your hair braided? Oh, this right here? No, your hair. Is your hair braided? Oh, yeah, it is. Looks pretty. I thought I saw a braid. I just wasn't sure because I'm a little yeah. blind. No, go away, child. <laughs> Not turning on that brain phone. Oh, we have the my phone. My phone is on one of those. Is like propped up. It's not. There's nothing blocked. The microphone. My my internet. My phone just. Died. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. There's a whole other adult in this house. 
Oh, you know what, Ito? You know what also helps, too? If um, everybody else in the house, like, turns off their Wi-Fi for a moment. Because you guys are probably competing for Wi-Fi. So, so maybe um, that might help, too. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to wrestle my phone for this whole day. I don't know where Kay is. I'm going to be right back again. Sorry for the pause. Sorry. Okay. Oh, there we are. In the past, so I'll find think she leaves a comment. Welcome, welcome, everybody who's joining. I hope you can hear me. Welcome, welcome. We're on Taino time. Taino time. That's even better. I'm going to be real specific. We're on. Not yeah. for the <laughs> If y'all don't know, y'all y'all don't know. We're on Taino time. Right? <laughs> oh snap! No, I just oh. There you are. It's not. It's not really invite. I didn't know if it's me invite. Is there still a tap on who can go live? I know before it used to be you have so many followers. I might be might be a cap. I'm not sure. I was able Taylor to send you by not letting me send Water Vixen an invite. You can go. Maybe Google. Like Google be lying. I can hardly hear you. Here, let me turn off this fan. Let me turn off my fan. There we go. Yeah, it still has a little. I can hold it. Say. Okay. Uh. Well, um, we're just going to have to boost their, uh, <laughs> their page. For we're going to have to boost their page. Everybody needs to go. Everyone needs to go like or follow Water Vixen right now. Yeah. If you're not already. Um, <laughs> Oshun's Wrath just uh, stated, turn off any enhancements. That's a good uh, idea. Let's see. Turn off any enhancements. Yeah. My enhancements is off. I don't have anything on. Y'all are getting my, my bear, my bear messed up. I feel that, that worked a little bit. Or any filters, no filters. We turned everything off. 
Yeah, I even got I even got my audio curtain because the lighting was gonna be bad. I got my curtain. <laughs> Woo! See now y'all can see how shiny I am. First. <laughs> I'm trying to get on sick for my computer to see um see what messages like talk body o curtains <laughs> uh, you see people in the trailer park and they got their blankets and towels and stuff in the window yeah that's what we're that's what we're doing right now yeah we you know this could be a door. <laughs> Yo, you pin that joint up. It's like that's privacy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we be walking in our underwear. Out. It's too hot not to, even with AC on and stuff. Yeah, I turn on. Well, good morning. Good, I mean, good morning. Good evening. Good evening. See, I'm rushing. I'm rushing the time. See, take the time. I need some more coffee. My summer it's good tea. More, it's more somewhere. It's more yeah. than somewhere. <laughs> well, did you want to just um, go ahead with the chat? Because we're really going to talk about stories. And then um, I do have Water Vixen sent as a set, rather, as a moderator. Okay. And, um, not already following her please go follow her so that she can get a thousand followers and come on live with us i yes. didn't realize that, that limit was still a thing on tiktok so that's that's my bad why are my glasses okay. so what do you want to talk about first well um you know we were talking about like maybe possibly kind of talking about our stories and how um, we get these stories from the colonizers, like of our people's stories, right? And how they wrote them down. And, you know, for centuries, we kind of like read these stories in the way that the colonizers wrote them. But just recently, I think that uh, by cross-referencing from other Arawakan uh, tribes, or Arawakan speaking tribes and how they tell their stories or even listening to our grandparents tell stories, you know, um, you know, the Hebrew folks from the mountains, <laughs> as my grandmother would call my grandfather, <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah, it's like kind of like deconstructing what we know a little bit and kind of retelling these stories um, kind of like in a way where uh, it's, I guess, uh, a little bit uh, decolonized, a, a, like a decolonized way of storytelling, right? Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, familial stories and memories with missing context. Yeah, a lot of these, a lot of these stories uh, just feel like they're missing context, like, right. Um, so I was uh, just dissecting a little bit about the story of the, um, the how humans came out of the two caves. Uh, well, the one cave, Kasibahawa. You know, that is the, that's the woodpecker story, right? So is that the woodpecker story? Like later on down the line, the woodpecker? It's it's really hard to keep track of the stories because even even Pane didn't write them down in in chronological order. So yeah. um, the Pasibahawa was with the sun and the moon coming out of. The cave. Yeah, like the one cave, um, the humans came out of, and then the second cave, um, Amayauna, the other beings came out of. Yep. In Ridi. And then it is the Nima specifically came out, like the rest of humanity came out of the other cave. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so looking at um, and doing like comparative uh, comparisons, like comparative studies with some of the Arawakan uh, tribes, you know, and just kind of like piecing together, uh, starting to learn how to or try to tell these stories kind of like, I, I don't know, even, I mean, just by using our own words and um, staying as accurate as possible to what was written down, but kind of like, um, I would say, adding to it in our own, our own twist to it, you know, instead of being so dry, if that makes sense. I, I agree. Yeah. Like breathing life into, into the story instead of just, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, 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 you know how they drink in, in schools instead of talking at you in conversation. Exactly. So yeah, we have some, um, we have some really interesting questions here. Um, Oh, and some comments. So we have one person, uh, Just Findy, saying, uh, I have my great grandma recording, uh, uh, recorded telling stories. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. You know, maybe someday uh, you can actually, you know, probably put those stories to print or even tell those stories, retell them, right? You know, for a younger generation, we need to, we need that. Because, you know, yes, we have these stories that were written down by Pane and everything, but we are living people and we can, we can write down, continue, we can t continue our stories, you know, um, and in the, even in the context of where we live, because if some of us are in diaspora, you know, and how it is to be a Taino in diaspora, you know, how does that feel? And what are the lessons that we learn from that? And so, you know, so our youth and our children will be able to relate, right? So it's very important to have the old stories, but it's also important to create new ones. Like our, um, even our Arawakan uh, speaking relatives um, and other indigenous relatives, like throughout, I mean, basically throughout the Americas, so-called Americas throughout the world, they continue their stories. You know, they don't just stop pre-1492, they continue, they, they talk about like how the colonizers came and you know what happened after that and so on and so forth and every day. I mean, look at um, one of the most popular television series, uh, was it Reservation Dogs? You know, that's like storytelling. That's, those are stories, yeah. right? So it's like, it's very important to continue to tell these new stories. Um, there's a new, uh, there's another question here. Uh, so how did the evil spirits, uh, the Mavoyano, um, come into being, right? Now, I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I would say, I, I don't know if the Moboya, uh, Moboya no are like evil per se. I think that they're more mischievous. I mean, they are like evil spirits, but they have another name. But um, Moboya no were more like trickster entities, uh, the ones that would like trip you up and, and things of that nature, especially if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing or if it, you know, or if you're going down a path, you shouldn't be going and things of that nature. They love that stuff. Um, now how they came into being, that's a very interesting story. Elba, do you know any um, stories about that? The, the main, uh, I know about as far as like stories and because they're uh, related in cultures, is um, about the Tupapa. And from my understanding, they're not necessarily evil per se, like you mentioned, but there are definitely, as far as Maboyano are concerned, they're definitely like not here to like help humanity. That's not 
that's not their goal. Like they, they really don't care about us. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of them that would rather us not even be around. <laughs> um, but um, I saw a question about the story regarding the Koki and it said something about, hold on, I think it was Frey who wrote it. I'm trying to scroll back about Koki being taken by a hurricane and a god created. I have not heard that story. Have you? Me either. Now, um, now the thing no, is that there's, there's a different Koki. Uh-huh. I mean, oh, no. <laughs> We're having I, a little I, lag. It's a little lag. <laughs> Um, but uh, it's the internet. Go ahead. It's the Go ahead. My bad. Now, um, I think I think that there's a, a lot of authors that are like creating new stories, but what they're doing is they're creating new stories with um, with uh, some of our characters or some of our um, spirits and some of our you know uh, beings that we've had in the old stories. They're like creating new stories with them. But in a context of like as if it was in the past, you know. So you you it, they're not original stories per se, like the original stories that our our ancestors told. By what I meant by um, stories that that we create today, it's like in the context of today and moving forward, you know. So if we create new stories instead of revamping or like like. I don't know, like recreating stories from 1492 would be really great to like create stories like contemporary stories now, but like, you know, like in the same kind of way, in the same kind of context where it's like you're teaching kids, you know, uh, not to not to be greedy, you know, because a lot of our a lot of our ancestral stories um, had to do with, you know, just being careful, not being greedy not taking too much, not, you know, like not, you know, not doing bad. Right. Yeah, so, me. yeah. So it's like, you know, it's, it's basically stories for ki most of the stories were for children, you know? So the elders would tell the stories of, uh, you know, our, our spirits, they would tell stories about the elements. They would tell stories about how things came to be. They would tell stories about, you know, the animals and the primordial beings that came before us. And so in, in a context of like trying to teach them, you know, um, how to how to live a good way, how to be, you know, how to live on a good path. So that's basically why we did that. Um, so and, but we can continue to tell those stories. But that Koki story about being taken away and a goddess created. I, I, I don't know the context of that story, so I, I've never heard of it either. So just to answer your question. Yeah, I know for the story for Koki that I know do with uh, Guavance or who it has to do with, um, you know, women being led away tribe and then the children that they couldn't feed with babies they couldn't feed. So the spirits took pity on these babies that were crying out for their moms and turned them into cookies. That's basically the short and sweet version of the story as far as, as I know it. I don't, I don't know, um, I don't know the, the version of that story, hurricane creating a goddess or whatever. I don't know. Um, and that's not to say it's not valid. There are definitely different versions of our stories, depending on how it's told and by who it's told. But um, that one, that's not one I, that I had heard before. Yes, it's, 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 yeah, this book, right, this one, Account the Antiquities. Oh, sorry. But yeah. This book actually translated, it was written in, I think Panes spoke Catalan, if I'm mistaken, it was translated to Spanish as well as to English. So whatever language is, your, um, if you don't happen to be bilingual, you can, you can get this. 
Um, it's not in Taino Library, but if you email me, I may or may not be able to help you get a copy. Nice, nice. But yes, um, the the messages, um, I guess, yeah, the stories that it says here, Tiria is saying, is, are the messages of morale, like morality. Not like Christian morality, not like, you know, good and evil per se, but more just kind of like being being a, um, a good relative. You know, how to live as a good relative. So that's how... You know, and not being, you know, not taking too much, right? It was, you know, um, because if you're living in community, right, it's about like living with community, knowing how to like do your part with community and, you know, sharing and giving and then also receiving as well. And there's a balance of that, right? So it's, it's, I think it was more, more like that, not like you're going to hell. You know, it's not, it's not that. <laughs> We didn't believe it. <laughs> I think the closest to that even was about the Maboya, like cover your belly button when you're walking around at night, you know, similar to a lot of other indigenous stories where they're like, don't you whistle because you're going to call something to you. Yeah. Um, it, it was very similar like that for our people. You, If you come across an, uh, a person that, even if even if they look like someone you know and you see that they got a belly button, don't walk, run. Like that that per that is not free. Cover your belly button because um and I believe this is where the belly button is a way to kind of like possess you, for lack of a better way to put it. So that was a warning. Um and like you the stories were either warnings or like how to be good a good person in your community and respect nature and basically just not be an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> basically it's all boiled down to don't be an asshole. That's it. <laughs> I mean, but, basically, <laughs> your best. <laughs> and, and, you know, um, uh, Oshun's wrath, um, just, uh, stated, which is yeah, similar. So Briar rabbit, um, and then we have Anansi, which tricksters and other traditions. And, um, you know, they taught practical, like teaching practical and moral lessons. And basically, that's basically what it was, you know. So a lot of our stories. So what happened was um, our stories have a deeper meaning than just, uh, I would say, just like, oh, this person was on this canoe and they just threw them over and all this other stuff. It wasn't, it wasn't that it was, it had to do with constellations and, you know, passage of time and seasons, you know, why things happen too. So like the stories had many different facets. So some of them had to, you know, show how to be a good person. Another one explained how the universe worked, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Just like in, in most indigenous cultures throughout the whole world. Exactly. Exactly. So we have more messages here. Yeah. Knowledge of our cosmo vintage. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. There's, that's a cave to your body. Oh, the the uh, belly button. Yeah. It's a cave entrance to your body. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And stuff are concerned. Um, you know, I'm not a Bejique, so I won't go too much into that without um, one of our, you know, spiritual people on the to make sure we don't get crazy or anything like that. But um, uh -huh. yes, that is why they protect your belly button. Exactly why. Now, um, just findy says, uh, the call of the Koki protect the lands. It's when you don't hear them that you have to be fearful. No, no. It's, yeah. That's facts. Like if you don't hear them, there's something coming. <laughs> Just run. There's definitely something wrong. There's definitely red flag for sure. Yeah, our ancestors were very skilled astronomers. And I know that like not to bring 
Christianity to the table, even though that's exactly what, what I'm about to do. But um, what Inaru was mentioning earlier, um, as far as these stories not not needing to be taken literal, there's, there's oh, she gone. I just invited her back. But um, yeah, these stories are not meant to be literal. They do have a lot to do with, um, you know, the seasons and the phases of the moon and stuff like that. I know a lot of people from uh, the Caribbean who may or may not be familiar with like Catholic Catholicism. Um, you know, we have Three Kings Day, Nostra Rey y Mago. And that is supposed to be like an allegory for the changing of the seasons and Jesus is the sun and the way all that happens. It's very similar in a lot of different teachings, um, you know, and as, as most of us know, the Bible stole it. They stole it from other cultures that had these teachings. So. You there? Okay. Sorry. You looked frozen for a second there. I was scared. <laughs> no, I was, I was reading. I was, <laughs> that was my reading face. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> my bad. That's like, yeah, definitely. Um, let me see. Would love to learn more about the spirituality side. Um, I feel like we practice even without knowing why. Yeah, um, you know, a lot of traditions that were passed down through our families throughout the Caribbean, we don't realize that some of them, not everything had um, like European roots, not everything had um, African roots, but some of them were actually Taino. But it wasn't really uh, articulated. It's like one of those things, oh, we've always done that, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, of course, placement of, um, well, I'm not going to speak on that, just like Elba said. Like, there's there's certain things that people do, and each family has their own way and, and things like that. But um, I would say that uh, contact the Baike and, and have a conversation and say, hey, you know, um, this is what my family did. Is it something that's very similar to what um, our indigenous ancestors uh, from the Caribbean did or, you know, something like that? So those are discussions. That's for another time, definitely, when we have uh, uh, one, of the, one of the spiritual leaders on. So, yeah, definitely. Yes, Pidipismo definitely has um, traces, at least has as it's practiced in the Caribbean, has uh, traces of uh, Taino practice in it. There are a lot of um, practices that that are African traditional religions, and they have safeguarded some of our Taino practices. They're not um, it, they're not all solely African. They have um, What's the word I'm looking for? It's not eclectic, but um, I, I had the word on the tip of my tongue and then it, it, it left, but basically like an amalgamation of um, different practices were created in the Caribbean. That's why, you know, uh, voodoo, santeria, or whatever practiced on in one island isn't the same when you go to like New Orleans and see people in in Nolens, uh practicing voodoo, there's it's a little different based off of who was interacting with who and what languages were being spoken by who at that time. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And then um, we have here, uh, yep, using um, using the baco is definitely a Taino practice. Yeah. Thank you, Oshun. Secretism. That's the word I was yeah. looking. For. Oh, spiritism, yes. Yeah, like, dang it, I know the word. I know it. Yeah, and tobacco is definitely, because tobacco is indigenous to uh, the so-called Americas. So um, we use that uh, just, you know, for cleansing, for healing. That's medicine um, and things of that nature. Uh you know, I have a story about, uh, and speaking of a story, I have a story about uh, when my ears pr first got pierced. And my ears got pierced as, a, as an infant. I was about like two weeks old or something like that. And my great-grandfather did it, actually, um, on my mom's side. And he had held me and 
then after the ears were pierced, he then uh, blew tobacco smoke on there, on each ear. So, and it, how I know this, I know this not from like a long time ago. This was told to me a long time ago. This was literally told to me like last year by my mom. My mom's like, oh yeah, you know, your, your great grandfather just blew tobacco smoke. I don't know why, you know, <laughs> it's like, that's an important thing to say to somebody. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is, like you said, like somebody said before, pieces of a puzzle, right? There's like all these little bits and pieces that um, our recent ancestors have done. So when we think about our ancestors, sometimes we think about way, way back. We don't, we really don't have to go that far back. You know, it could have been our great grandparents. It could have been our grandparents. It could have been our parents. You know what I mean? Like, so, um, when you want to when you want to figure out how to be all indigenous and everything like that you just have to look at your family <laughs> you know so it's like in a lot of ways like look at the the old folks the elders you know that's why that's why in one of the videos i said talk to questions because if you ask them like about the not have anything to say but if you just ask them about your family history they may say things that like you know the light bulb comes on in your head as you're listening to them and you're like that was probably a Taino you know, practice that was passed down from our family members like blowing smoke in your ear you know what I mean um a lot of our elders don't know what they know and um you know some of them are scared to talk about it or they don't really you know feel connected focus on like your family history, they'll talk to you. You might not be able to get them to stop talking. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And a lot of people, it, it's really interesting. It's like, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I'm seeing all these things that, you know, our grandparents did, you know, your grandparents did, um, you know, like things that, that are very similar and see, that's how like, um, way back in the day, that's how like the Taino movement got started, like about 50, 60 years ago. Um, I think, uh, in, in diaspora, in New York, I mean, it's always been around and stuff like that, but as a movement, you know, um, it started there because people were just sharing stories and they were, you know, in contact with like Northern natives up, up North and, and things. So there's a lot of stories I hear from people, older folks, older, like Taino, who talk about how they uh, were hanging out with their Mohawk friends or, you know, like the Iroquois, you know, friends and, and you know, things that Lenape friends. And they're like, oh yeah, our family did that too. Oh yeah, your family did that. Oh yeah, our family, like, like, like this, like, like check this out like this. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> right. Like who who knew like it's like, oh no, we always Puerto Ricans do that. Yeah. You know, it's like then you find out it's not just Puerto Ricans, it's, it's Dominicans and then it's Haitians do it. And then, you know, Jamaicans so you see all these and then it's like, oh, northern natives do that. Oh, southern natives like wow, like it's like this whole thing where you realize that we're all interconnected and in this wider sense, you know, and it's not just to one island or one section of the island or, you know, so on and so forth. I'm pretty sure a lot of our abuelas or bisabuelas or whatever, like mopping and sweeping to music and going from the back of the house to the front of the house to like clear out all the, all the energy, you know what I'm saying? Or like, I don't know about y'all, but my grandma used to, she had some kind of tea looking thing that she would make and then like pour it on us in the bathtub. And I remember as a kid being like, why are you bathing us with dirty water, abuela? But like, my <laughs> mom was like, no, she was cleansing y'all spiritually. There was like mint and rue or something in there. I don't know. I don't know, but she was. Nena, una limpia. 
before you know it, you're in the bathtub just sitting there like, I don't know what my grandma's doing, but whatever. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We remember those things. That's right. That's right. And yes, uh, I see the magical solution saying the Eastern hem hemispheres weren't the only ones who traveled and traded. Yeah. Our people traveled and traded. I, I shared recently an article about, uh, well, not internally with a, a group uh, about how in in uh, in the Caribbean there was uh, jaguar teeth, you know, that were created as pendants that were carved, you know. So I mean, of course, jaguar. And then there's another article about deer, uh, about deer antlers, too, of white-tailed deer that were found in the Caribbean as well in the Lesser Antilles. So, um, but those were traded because they're not, they're not in, uh, native there either. So yeah, we traded, we ventured, you know, jump, hopped on our canoe, canoas, no. <laughs> That's why sometimes like when people talk about cultural appropriation, like we got to really be careful because there are things that, you know, yes, their origin is not Caribbean, but our ancestors, you know, it's a testament to the fact that our ancestors were, you know, exchanging and communicating with other indigenous people that we have certain things like there was no gold in Puerto Rico, but we had gold jewelry, you know, they, they're um, like cowrie shells, for example, that's very strongly tied to African culture, but they don't only exist you know, around India and in those areas, there are different species that are also found in um, in the Americas, you know? So it's like, okay, just because we're, we're implementing or incorporating this into our regalia or whatnot does not mean that we are appropriating. Um, in, the, in, in 22, there are a lot of people who do appropriate because there's no recognition of their origins or, or how a, um, a people were obtained a specific object or whatever. But when there is recognition and respect and honoring, that's not appropriation. Yeah, especially if, if, um, our, if we have um, history with these objects, like we're talking about centuries and centuries and centuries, if not millennia with some of these objects that are not even from there, but have been traded. Um, these were very old jaguar teeth that they found. I think it was like some something like 900 AD or whatever, you know, like we were doing this for a long, long time. So, um, yeah, it's it's really awesome. Yep, the, the Nagua uh, patterns are very similar, the geometric, yeah, because um, we have relatives in the, what we call the mainland and like South America, Guyana, um, you know, Belize, Honduras, you know, Venezuela, Colombia. We have relatives all over, you know, Trinidad, Tobago, like all the, all the lesser Antilles. Which sidebar? So. He's rude. <laughs> Was that I mean Islands are smaller, but dang, why the colonizer had to do them like that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, these are great. Yeah. Yeah, what about that belt? Um, that belt, the there was a belt, um, the one that has the the rhino rhino horn on it. There's a, a run some rhino horn and it was um glass beads on it mm -hmm. and everything. There's a belt uh, of uh, Sami that was probably worn by Kasike or a spiritual person. Um, and that one had incorporated a lot of trade items from European and African sources. And this is post uh, contact, but that means that we were still practicing. See, there's this thing where we think that 1492 all of a sudden we we didn't be we weren't a taino anymore like we all of a sudden stopped like speaking our language and we stopped practicing you know our spirituality and we stopped you know and it wasn't it wasn't that way now where things change and altered of course absolutely but things didn't stop 
you know, right after. So you, you see even post-colonial, there's actually studies about it, post-colonial, of our ancestors still, still continuing. Let's see here. Yeah, that be the semi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a survival tactic. No, absolutely. One hundred percent. People had to hide. Um, that's why I feel like a lot of people don't realize how much Taino influence uh, Espiritismo, uh, particularly in Puerto Rico or other parts of the Caribbean as well because like a lot of these different syncretic practices, they used Christian imagery to be able to venerate certain ancestors without, mm -hmm. you know, catching, catching from their ancestors. Wow. Yeah, there's uh, somebody says here, in fact, I found um, records of indigenous peoples being taken from the islands to pacify indigenous um, people in Florida, taken from PR, Cuba. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to say I read an article that there is, um, I know for a fact, like in Georgia, they have um, this carving, I can't remember, Stone Mountain, but yeah. they found very much, very similar to our Taino petroglyphs. And it's believed that our ancestors didn't just come visit Florida and Georgia, that they may have made it all the way up to like the Virginias as well. Um, so I feel like there's definitely a lot of um, underestimated indigenous peoples and their ability to like travel, navigate, um, communicate with each other, even if there were language barriers and stuff like that. Yeah, that's how the Spaniards were able to go and invade, um, you know, uh, the mainland of North America, what we now know as like Florida and things of that nature it was using the knowledge of our ancestors to go up there. Um, you know, they would, of course, coerce our ancestors for information and, and they would use that information to go into these areas because of those trade routes. There's ancient trade routes all throughout. Like if you live in the United States or in Canada or something, you would find that there's, uh, you know, a, an avenue in your town or something like that. Especially like in the East Coast is very common where a lot of these old, like Route 1 was an old Indian trail. Like, so a lot of people don't realize that, but a lot of these old, uh, old trails became highways and stuff that we use today. So colonizers still colonizing, you know. So wow, we have this. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. What were you saying? Oh, I was, I was just gonna say that um, the people that colonized us did a really good job of like twisting our stories and twisting our knowledge and stuff like that to either make it seem like we were dumb and they really, we, that we needed their help or just to Christianize, you know, it's, it's not uncommon for them to take entity or people that they colonize and incorporate them and make them a saint or whatever to kind of like help pacify or, you know what I mean? Um, that, or force people to assimilate. Si tu no deja de joder. Yeah. I felt coming in and like uh, being funny. Okay. So happens. <laughs> when you're a parent. That's but, why um, like my I came in. I'm sorry. Asking for a No, I recognize it. But yeah, but definitely it's. um. Yeah, I'm reading some of these right here about uh, to point out people literally swear we are wrong when we speak on our culture. I mean, yeah, like the thing is that it's and to touch on what you were saying um, also Elva, about how, you know, when when we read in the history books, like about how our people interacted or any, 
Native or Indigenous people anywhere around the world that interacted with, um, you know, colonizers, it's always like this thing where the Native people were in awe and they were looking and they're like, oh my goodness, this is so wonderful. Are they gods? No, they're not. We knew that they weren't. Yeah. We knew they weren't. For, for goodness sakes, would gods be shipwrecked? You know, would they would they be shipwrecked? Wouldn't they like get themselves out of the boat? <laughs> you know, so we knew they weren't gods. You know, when they were drowned in Inyako, if you know where my family is from, um, when they were uh, what was it? The the one Spaniard, uh, the one Spaniard soldier was drowned and stuff like that. Um, it was like it. It wasn't, I don't even think that they were checking to see if he was a god or not. They were just probably just drowning his ass. <laughs> it's like, we're just going to take you. Based off of, there was a prophecy that some like entities were going to come, right? So when the Spaniards came, they were like, are these the prophecy people? Are these the, you know, whatever spirits? I don't remember the exact... Um, descriptors that they gave but basically you know when they saw how the spanish were treating everybody they were like nah that's not them you know yeah. so um they our our ancestors as we said before they were they were astrologers they were scientists so they basically were like we're gonna perform an experiment to see if these people are from some other realm or if they're human like us so we're going to drown the mess out of this man and then we're going to sit here and watch his body decompose to see a, will die, and B, does he decompose like the rest of us? You know what I mean? Because if so, then he's human, and, you know, then that that means everybody else that came with him is too, you know? It was, it, they were scientists. They were like, no, nah, you're not, no. Don't play with us. Yeah, that's the thing, because our, our see, our ancestors uh, also, and other Arawakan um, people's you know, and the the I guess with the the cosmology, the mythos, right? They um, believed in like other realms, like like walking into uh, other realms or people beings that were not necessarily they might look like us, but not be us, right? And um, you know, I feel that they were in contact because they, you know, obviously they. Um, I think that they had more access to like the cohoba and, you know, other sacred medicines and, and snuffs and, and things of that nature. So rape and other sacred medicines. So they were able to interact, you know, with the rel different realms and things of that nature. So that's not far fetched to think that it's like, you know what, are these people a real thing? They're not whatever, you know, they're just, just nasty humans. So. Yeah, they were feel the Spanish out like, who are you? Where are you from? Why are you doing this hot mess that y'all are doing? You know, we need to figure this out and fix it. Um, yeah. And I think it was also a story that, or a belief rather, that the spiritual realm, the realm of the undead where our ancestors are, literally was the other half of the island. You know, on, at night, they would come from their half of the island to... <laughs> come hang out and that's why I cover your belly button be careful because Maboyano will you know present themselves like an ancestral spirit I think we've all heard in different uh spiritual practices you know there are entities that will pretend to be good and they're not they do not mm -hmm. have your mind so um and there's, you know, the, the caves and, and the waters and the bats, all of, and uh, I believe Guayaba, because we didn't have honey. So Guayaba mm -hmm. took place of that sweetness to, to leave as an offering for our ancestral spirits at, at night. Absolutely. And, and it was just as simple as just like walking from one place to another through, there's actually stories, um, I keep on going on to because of the the comparative stories that I read because they're more um, the ones the stories from the Arawakan speakers of the mainland are more complete um, because a lot of them were colonized much later right so you actually had people uh, colonizers that came in settlers that would come in 
and actually want to record the stories. Um, whereas the conquistadors just wanted our gold and land. They wanted just gold and land. That's it, you know? Um, and they just wanted to destroy things, right? So they weren't, I mean, when Pane just wrote things down, he's like, oh, okay, let me just write this down. It's really curious. He probably was just writing something just to, you know, have the queen, you know, read something at night or whatever, we'll have you, you know, oh, look at this, you know, that kind of thing. But it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't really detailed and it wasn't very careful collecting. And he said it himself. He's like, I'm not really sure if this is correct or not, you know, you know, so it is what it is, you know, that kind of thing. And he tells the reader this. So um, when we compare the stories to uh, the more complete stories of our Arawak ancestors, like they actually do talk about, you know, the vulture people, the bat people, you know, um, they talk about the jaguar people, you know, so they talk about these beings and they also talk about tricksters that would present themselves as a long lost loved one, right? And then when you go up to them, you know, you, you know, you, you're unalived, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, you know, you're going up to this part. And so, because you already had the 10, 10 days of, uh, you know, of mourning, right? You already had that. You already had that process and, and, and all the ceremony that goes with it. And it's one of those things where it's like, they're not going to appear to you like in, in form in front of you. They might appear to you in the spirit realm if you're doing like ceremony at Kohoba or something like that, but they're not going to appear to you in physical form. And so uh, that's why these these entities would try to draw you in. And our relatives have these stories too, the same stories. So it's really interesting how you can make those comparisons and parallels. And pay attention to your dreams too, because it's very common for your ancestors to um, try to communicate with you through your dreams. I definitely recommend it. If this isn't something you already do, record your dreams like dream journal or I'm lazy and I know that the longer that I'm awake the less I remember so I will grab my phone and just do a voice recording to be able to go back to it later because um, there have been a couple of dreams that I have had that later on you know years later I go back and I read them and I'm like holy crap I know what that meant now holy crap I can make these connections like they were trying to tell me something and I'm just over here like da 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 I don't know. I don't I don't know what it means. Absolutely. Um and, and Water Fixing just did write. Um Pane was unprepared to write as much as he did because he didn't think that there was anything to record, of course. You know, we have to realize that um the Spaniards, when they came here, they were just coming out. They, they were actually in the midst of the Inquisition. They were just coming out of the Dark Ages. You know, these folks were just really brutal. They, they had plenty of, they were very hardened nature. Um, so it's one of those things that we have to remember. Um, when they came over here, they, they did not come over here for any good even if they thought they were going to India, they were not going to come over here for any, any goodwill. So, um, you know, they didn't care for our stories. They didn't care for our people. So we, we can't always look to them. Like we have so many of these olders that want to like refer to these Pane stories and say, well, this is it. This is gospel, you know, cause they like, they kind of treat it like as if it's, in a Christianized way, they try to treat it like it's gospel, you know, like this is it, this is, you know, taking it literally. It's like, no, these are just pieces of a larger story that was kind of pieced together by this person who really didn't care that much, you know? And, and so right now our task is to kind of like try to extract because there were other type of chroniclers out there um, that weren't Spanish that were like German or Dutch or French and like try to get some of those stories, older stories and um, get those together as well. And we can probably have a more co complete picture of what our ancestors' cosmology looked like. 
So. Absolutely. Because even with different languages, because our ancestors um, didn't have a written system, at least from a colonial perspective, um, there are a lot of things that there's like spelling discrepancies and stuff like that based off of, well, was this chronicler Spanish? Was this chronicler writing Italian or not Italian, um, Catalan? You know what I mean? If you said German, what? I, so there's spelling discrepancies. There's, there's, um, cause you hear, you to write things down how you hear them. So they could have completely jacked up, um, some of our names and all, all of that, all of that. So taking different pieces of the puzzle and then what we're doing now is bringing people, trying to bring people into community to have these conversations about, well, in my family, we did this and in my family, we did that. You know, every, I, I, I strongly believe that every person who is a Taino descendant has a piece, their family has kept some piece of the large picture and if we just all come together and this is my piece this is my piece this is my piece we'll eventually get to to a point where um there's there's less confusion there's less um there are less gaps in between we already have absolutely absolutely and you know and and what Vixen says uh that's part of decolonizing and indigenizing. Spending time with elders is very important. Elders, um, old people, because I'm not, not, not elders. Disregard, not to disregard the importance of having our older members of the community, but everybody older ain't elder, okay? There are plenty of people who have been in community longer than, than us, and they go to talking and you're like... <laughs> Even did you ha have you even how do you okay okay like recommending yeah. fictional novels as if they're like primary sources? No, <laughs> please don't do that. Definitely, and we have. And speaking of elder, we do have an elder here. Uh, uh, Watushina from um, he goes by uh, Rodney Rivera. Um, he oh, is, God. yeah, he plays the the Maiwakan, which is our log drum, and he's a OG. <laughs> Boy, he's really good. Too. I can oh. I consider. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Well, he'll trading post is here and please go buy their their uh things, but don't buy everything because I want to buy stuff too. Man, so. isn't that the you see something and you have your eye on it, so you're just like putting money to the side and then someone else buys it, and you're like, Puneta. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And speaking of beating, that's something that I've I've seen people say, like, that, you know, are appropriating. And it's like, what are you talking about? We beat it, too. Like, we have whole semino that are beaded. Like, Yo, there, there's stories about, like, how when the Spaniards um, saw the, the weaving that the people did, like, for the Nagua. They said it was finer than some of the silks. It was finer. Like our people knew how to throw down. That's it. it that's what it is. It's just, the thing is that there is there are um, there are uh, I guess forces that would like to kind of suppress and belittle the accomplishments and contributions, even today, of our ancestors. I mean, and it's being taught today, like in some of the schools in the Caribbean. Like, it's really, really bad. They're trying to teach our youth, you know, that, you know, oh, yeah, you know, you might have some Taino blood, but they're all dead. And it's like, wait a minute, hold up. If I have Taino blood, how, wait a minute, are they dead? How am I dead? You know, you know what I mean? Or... You know, and it's like that's um, that's something that we have to be very mindful for. That's why it's so so important to decolonize, 
and also uh, to try to get our get our accurate stories out there. Exactly. Talk about, I can't remember what that said it. I want to say it was Oshun's wrath, but it was a minute ago um, that uh, she had left a comment about about mix the mix because a lot of people want to act now that you are mixed that somehow like makes you less Taino. But it, our people were mixed prior to colonization. You know what I mean? They were they were interacting with other indigenous peoples, and since a lot of them were also matriarchal, you know what I mean? You establish families, these connections. There's already there. And then when it comes to like Spanish came, they weren't like pure white folks. They were mixed too. Um, mm -hmm. I know dad has ancestry from like the Canary Islands, which is right there between, um, between Spain and Africa. So there were, and obviously Africans are indigenous people too. It's just, you know, a different mm -hmm. continent. There are black folks that are indigenous to both. So like there were, there were the Berbers before these Europeans kind of like over, there were already mixed people. And the Spanish nobles didn't send their whitest of white noble people over on the boats with Columbus. They sent their lower class folks, which everywhere in the world, the lower you, the, the lower, the closer to lower class you get, the darker people are or tend to be. And they yep. do, yeah. About the Moors. Exactly. A lot of us are taught we are Spanish, African, and Taino. Um, granted, everybody doesn't have that same mix. You know, there's people who have Asian ancestry or they have Jewish ancestry or from different parts of the world in there. And Taino is kind of what binds us all. But yeah, there's... There's a lot of us that kind of fall into that triracial theory of, okay, you're European, you're, you're African, you're Black, and you're also Indigenous. Yes, absolutely. Yes, and, and thank you, uh, Oshun Saratha. Uh, Berber is considered bad. Uh, they prefer um, Amazi, right? And Imazi, Imazi. Oh, um, that's what they had. I didn't realize that's what yeah. she was trying to say. <laughs> no, I mean, and and speaking of names, which is uh, thank you for for um for for doing that. And speaking of names, you know, what about uh, our relatives? You know, the um, Kalinago. You know, people. Uh, still, still call them um, carrot, you know, which has like a a negative con connotation to it. I mean, there's still some old folks that still say it, like older people, elders, and stuff like that from uh, with the even within the tribe that still say it. Just like um, there's some older northern natives that call themselves American Indian, you know. Um, that's what they are used to calling themselves, you know, and, and, and that's, if that's what they were prefer, but some of the younger folks and forward thinking and forward, you know, from here time forward, we should refer to our, uh, cousins, our very close cousins as the Kalinago, because we share a lot of, not only a lot of history with them, but, uh, we share some words and, you know, so, yeah. Cousins, they're cousins for sure. Definitely, definitely um, be considerate of because there are a lot of indigenous peoples who have um, names for them that everyone knows them by, and they are slurs. Um, like there's a book by Jesse Walter Fuchs that is titled Aborigines of Puerto Rico. It wasn't until the most recent season of Womblands that I even learned that that is um, a slur for Aboriginal peoples and that not to mm. call them. I was like, oh, I didn't know that, you know? Um, 
for people who may or may not know that are paying attention, Eskimo is a slur. We don't want to use that. Um, Gypsy is a slur for Romani peoples, if I'm not mistaken. You know, we don't want to use that. And I'm saying these words not because I'm like, oh, I don't have a problem slinging slurs. Just just for clarity, because if I say E word, G word, whatever, y'all going to be like, what the hell is she talking about? Right. You know, definitely, definitely. And and um, uh, no, I think that might be for another day. But, you know, uh, Daino is the Arawak word. That's it. Done. <laughs> I mean, we embrace it because it is, you know, our word. It, it does mean relatives, siblings. Uh, it means blood relatives, you know, however you want to, uh, you know, describe it. But it, it is, uh, it does mean relatives. So when the people were pointing to this uh, for the Spaniards, the people that were in the island, uh, they were saying, oh, they're Taino, Taino, Taino. Well, because they were saying, oh, they're relatives. They're my bros. They're my, you know, they're my cousins. You know, that's what they were saying. Um, no, we didn't necessarily call ourselves that as a people. Like, so most indigenous people call themselves like the people, right? So Lenape is like the people, you know, for example. Um, so Lokono is the people, right? So that's what that's. So we call ourselves something very similar to that for for us you know for i mean we might have like named ourselves according to like our island like so you know uh, boriquen boriquen no right uh shortened down to boricua you know so that's yeah because we like to cut off words we don't like to pronounce everything that takes too much work <laughs> trying to have this language flow yeah <laughs> but yeah and I think that's why a lot of people are like oh I prefer Boricua or I prefer you know Quisqueyano or Haitiano or whatever and you know that's absolutely valid um, but the reason a lot of us don't you know shun the term Taino is because it unites all of us regardless of the island we're on because if you say Boricano you're only talking about Puerto Ricans. Now you're excluding Taino on other parts of the island, or not islands, the Caribbean. Um, you know, is a term we embrace. Like, you know, yeah, there are misnomers, but it's still what people know us by. And the fact that it means family of all the misunderstanding Spanish had to pick the word that we use to mean people, family. Like other indigenous people, it's like, y'all fucked up. But you did good <laughs> time. Like, how'd y'all accidentally <laughs> do this right? This one thing. Absolutely. So, I mean, again, there's forces out there that um, benefit from people not uh claiming our birthright as like indigenous folks of the Caribbean. Like there's folks that um, hashtag land back. There's folks who uh, don't want us to, uh, you know, reclaim, right? They want us, they want us to stay in um, diaspora and they want us to detach ourselves from the land and things of that nature. But I mean, if anybody has been to the islands, like if you've been to the islands, there's nothing like it. It's just like you just feel like, like you are a part, you know? It's it's a wonderful feeling that you are a part. And I think people, uh, there's forces out there that stand to benefit from us arguing um, what term to even use for ourselves um, because they don't want to see united they don't want to they don't want to see us for land reasons they don't want to see us come together you know because then there would need to be more recognition um possibly like federal recognition which is a whole other topic and everybody doesn't necessarily agree with but you know there's a certain amount of responsibility that would then be placed upon um our colonizers if we came together and you know all the deadly indigenous 
things. Yeah, definitely. Um, now, there's a question here. Uh, is it okay to refer to yourself as Boricua if you have little Taino DNA? So you want to take that, Elba? Because I, I... In my personal opinion, your blood quantum doesn't, you know what I mean, determine if you're Taino or not. Uh, I will say, however, that I do believe that the term Boricua should be left to indigenous peoples to claim. So if you happen to be Puerto Rican, but you're, you don't have any connection to Taino people and you don't have any Taino ancestry, then Boricua is, is not an accurate descriptor for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, BQ is a tool of colonization. Thank you, Water Vixen. I, I really, uh, agree with uh, what you just said, uh, Alba, because to be Puerto Rican, um, the, the identity of Puerto Rican or um, Puerto Rico is a colonial one, right? So it's just like saying you're a U.S. citizen, you're American, you know, so on and so forth. That's a colonial identity, right? And so anybody can be Puerto Rican, anybody. Like, you know, we have a lot of... Um, Chinese Puerto Rican folks. We have a lot of um, people from the Middle East in Puerto Rico and so on and so forth, but they don't have um, any uh, ancestry, indigenous Caribbean ancestry. So if they don't have indigenous Caribbean ancestry, yes, they're Puerto Rican, but they're not Boricua, you know, because Boricua predates the word uh, Puerto Rico. It predates by thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Through the there's word Puerto Rican. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go on. Lag. Yeah, I was going to say that there's a difference between uh, your nationality, your race, and your ethnicity. So, you know, when people say, like, I don't know, I'm black and half Puerto Rican, it's like you already sound confused because you're talking about one is a race and the other is a nationality. And they, they're not the same thing. You are black and Puerto Rican. Do um, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know if that makes any sense, but as far as like Boricua, that's, that would be a race. That would be an indigenous identity versus Puerto Rican, which is your nation, which would be your nationality. If you happen to be Puerto Rican, that is. Uh oh, my phone froze. You there, Inaru? So, there you go. Hello? Hi. Can you hear me? Okay, my phone. Yeah, I can hear Are you. Back? It looked like it for a second. I was like, what is happening? Guati fuck. <laughs> happening. <laughs> yes, our habit of adopting um, others. Yeah, you know what? That's. Did you hear what I said? I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. I was um, I was scrolling back through comments. Let me shut up. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, our habit of adopting others might confuse people too. Yeah, we have a habit of doing that. And I think because, um, you know, we're just, as Caribbean people, we're just like so like, you know, um, open and, I mean, not to create like stereotypes for ourselves or whatever, but there's a tendency to be very um, like our ancestors were. They were like, they saw people like stranded on a beach. They, you know, it's like, yo, let's help these guys out. What's going on here? You know, they were shipwrecked, you know, and uh, um, it's just one of those things. Like if it, you just being a good person, you just like, you know, just chilling. It's like, oh yeah, sure. You know, come and join the, come and join the barbecue. Let's, let's, let's have, you know, let's share a meal, you know, and, and that's how, that's how we are as a people. And unfortunately it does confuse folks um, because then that's when appropriating like that whole live Boricua thing. Oh God. Oh, that was horrible. I was like, no, I'm like, that's not. What we're not going to do is that. No. I'm like, okay. no. That's 
Oh, no. When I saw that, I was like, oh, no, this live Boricua, uh-uh. We, we can't, you can't put a price tag on us. You know, I mean, really, you're selling our identity? They want, like they want to do to us, they want to do to us what, they're, what they've done to Hawaii. Yeah, exactly. Shout out to Hawaiian family members because they're going through a lot of bullshit, too. Similar that's the Puerto like uh, military um, stuff, messing with people's health and everything. But um, what I was going to say earlier is that Oshun's Wrath made a good point when she said that um, when people say Black and Puerto Rican, a lot of the times they're referring to their ethnicity because Black is a race as well as an ethnicity, especially if you're looking mm -hmm. at it from like, of um, the United States. Um, and not just the United States, but you know that's what I'm familiar with. Uh, as far as like blackness being an ethnicity because their their culture was taken from them and stripped from them. So when they got here, you know, our African relatives had to create a new culture. So um, that that point to go ahead and read her out to make sure everybody else saw and heard it. Yeah. Um and yeah, they, they're doing the same thing to Hawaii and, and you know, um, it's just, I mean, but it's also happening in other parts of the Caribbean too. Um, you know, you have a lot of colonial uh, entities that are invading areas. Uh, and I use word invading because that's what they're doing. And they're taking resources like in Jamaica, the cockpit country, um, which is uh, in, shout out to our relatives in uh, Yamaye, the Yamaye Taino in Jamaica. Um, you know, the Maroon people, sovereign uh, people who also have um, indigenous Caribbean ancestry, they're Afro-indigenous people, um, they're fighting for their land. You know, they had a treaty with the Jamaican government and they're fighting for their land because uh, you have these uh, foreign investors who want to uh, strip the land of the resources. I mean, it really is happening all over the Caribbean. It's happening all over the so-called Americas, you know? So um, it's an indigenous struggle, especially, I mean, we are the forefront of climate, you know, um, of, of the climate fight and, and environment environmental struggles and, and things of that nature, because we know the land, we know our land the best, you know, and they just need to listen to indigenous peoples. They need to listen to native peoples. I mean, we've, we've held this down for millennia, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, you know, since time immemorial, according to our ancestors, and they came over here and just messed stuff up in like what, two, 300 years. Come on now. Exactly. I say like statistics, it's something like indigenous peoples protect 80% of earth's biodiversity. So, you know, when we say, when we say land back, it's, it's not own. We want to own this land and the way that colonizers view it. It's, it's, you know, this is for like community ownership more than individual ownership for us to be stewards of the land and take care of it. And, and our, um, you know, winged and four-legged relatives and all of that good stuff instead of doing what we're doing um i remember i saw a meme not too long ago and i really really liked it because it said um eco over ego because the ecosystem is all of us together where ego <laughs> absolutely absolutely Yep, Colombia too, the Amazon in the south. No, definitely Haiti, Haiti, you know. Um, they continue They continue to uh, try to steal resources. And that's why, it, like, like um, Elba, that's, you're absolutely correct. That's why we say land back, you know, because give it back to indigenous people so they could be the stewards of the land, you know. That doesn't mean we're kicking people out, you know, although there's some folks that, be nice to kick out <laughs> but you know I'm but you know <laughs> but 
but it's like you know we're the stewards you know we're connected to the land and water we know we know this like all you have to do is just take a walk with your bare feet on the on the ground and you you could feel it you know you could feel it yeah that sense of responsibility and waste should be felt no absolutely absolutely if your healing's not painful are you really healing exactly it's that's part of the process absolutely no that all that love and light stuff you know what i mean <laughs> oh unicorn parts that's not how that goes that's right you gotta dig in deep <laughs> sometimes real ugly yeah and we have to heal, like we have to heal. Like, so, you know, um, a lot of our, a lot of us uh, reclaiming our stories and reclaiming, um, you know, who we are as a people, that's, that's healing a lot of our ancestral trauma. That De definitely, definitely. That's very healing. Namaste, Karen. <laughs> you better take your singing bowls elsewhere. <laughs> Don't get me started on those Tibetan singing bowls. I love them. I have one. And my kids will <laughs> randomly walk in my room and just be like, ding. But you know what I mean? If we're if we're in the middle of a ceremony for our ancestors and you bring a Tibetan singing bowl, see, there they go. I don't know if you heard it. <laughs> but yeah, you, you bring some shit like that. I'm going to be like, what are you doing? What are you doing, friend? What you doing? <laughs> you better be careful because, you know, ancestors are going to like that. <laughs> like, what's that? Thing I'm like, okay, in just about every spiritual practice, do they not tell you consult with the ancestors, you know, whatever form of divination you got, talk to them and make sure that what you're doing is okay because not everybody likes everybody. In mm -hmm. the real world, the spiritual realm. You might have an ancestor that if you put them on the same an uh, altar as another entity, it's going to cause problems. It doesn't matter that they're both your family. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why our stories are so important. And reclaiming our stories and listening to our stories is so important. And that, you know, like really, really listening to them. Um, and you see how like you and I are kind of like um, interacting and we're also kind of like reading the comments and things of that nature. I mean, basically, that's how our ancestors told stories. So it was active listening, right? It was active participation. You know, um, our stories weren't like dictated, right? They weren't like, you listen here and that's it. And you don't say nothing. You know, it's not, it's not like that. It was actually like, like, are you, you know, are you listening to what I'm saying? Say yes. I want to, you know, I want to hear you. Do you understand? You know, like that kind of thing. So it was very much kind of very a circular kind of thing. It wasn't like I, I read in the comments before, like a linear process where it's like, I give you information, you listen, and that's it. You know, you take information. It's not like that. It wasn't like that. It was very circular. I feel like that's why a lot of the times when we are having conversations, you'll see a lot of us like nodding our head or going, uh-huh. You know uh -huh. what I mean? confirm see you, you just did it to like confirm like hey i'm listening i'm participating in this conversation you're not just talking to the wall here you know absolutely absolutely and and a lot of times too we um you know i don't know if like i just did it just now i just said it twice like uh repeating ourselves like and always like kind of like and that's how we told stories if you've ever heard like if you've ever listened to your grandparents speak or like the old the the elders speak and and things, it's like this like sing songy kind of way of uh, speaking and you know and then you have somebody slapping their knee and like aha uh -huh, you know <laughs> things of that nature you know these funny stories and stuff and that's just continuation. It's indigenous. It's it's indigenous continuation. You know. Because we've been doing the same thing for thousands of years. It's just, I mean, we don't have to look the same way or 
we don't look exactly the same way our native ancestors look. We don't look exactly the same way as our African ancestors look. We don't look the same way as our European ancestors look. You know what I mean? We are all of those things, right? And those things are within us. And that's, that's wonderful. That's great. You know, I don't compartmentalize, you know, oh, this finger is native. You know, like, no, I'm like... <laughs> like blood quantum they're like okay well which which part of you is studying my ear is taino well i got taino blood like <laughs> like in a vibe <laughs> <laughs> what kind of what kind of practicing are you doing <laughs> you know and then they say oh, oh or some people will say you know it'll be interesting and it kind of like breaks my head you know it's like some people will say Oh yeah, like my grandfather was Taino. But and I'm not. like, but you're not? <laughs> like, 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 wait, was there a wall there? Did it stop? <laughs> you know? I don't know. I don't know. What can you do with that? It's you know, and then not everybody, like, not everybody can not everybody's gonna walk that journey with you. And that's okay. We have to understand that too. Like if you hear, if you hear your, your indigenous ancestors and you really want to learn more about them and you want to walk that path, right. Um, you know, that's wonderful. Like, but if you want to, you, you know, if you feel, you might have cousins that are feel that more European, that's fine too. That's okay. You have cousins that, you know, want to want to venture towards like the African pra practices and, and so on and so on. That's what that's fine. That's fine because we are all of those things. Right. And that's OK. And we're family, you know, and that's what's see. That's the thing about um, indigenous peoples throughout the whole world. The indigenous peoples throughout the whole world will tell you to recognize all of your ancestors. Not just certain part here, certain part here. You're not in parts. You're not a pizza pie. You know? Exactly. Not a pie chart. We're not not pumpkin. Oh, although if I was a pie, what would, what would I be? Like coconut custard. I'm about to say, what's your favorite? I, I would want to be a cheesecake. Ooh. Like <laughs> All kinds of don't even need to be specific. Just <laughs> Yeah, and 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 that's fine too. And and Osha said, you know, I'm more Afrocentric, you know, that and that's beautiful, and that's wonderful, you know. And that's and that's the thing. You might have cousins, you might have it, you yourself, you know, and you're just probably interested in learning more of your Taino ancestors, so you can, you know, go through that healing process because you know that's something that we we all have to do. And there's those of us who want to actually go a little further down that road and uh, learn about the practices and actually have that part of themselves to day-to-day -day life, you know, and learn about the language and so on and so forth. So, you know, it's a beautiful thing. I agree. Yes to cheesecake. I feel like are drawn to to certain practices or whatever for a reason you know what i'm saying like i know a lot of taino people when they do, do come into the movement and start reaching out to community it usually it's usually trying to connect to their ancestors who um in a you know out of a in a santeria in palo there's a bunch of different or maybe not more, but an act of practice is recognizing who your ancestors are, honoring them. Absolutely, absolutely. So like and everybody's everybody's path is different, and that's what makes us uh wonderful humans, you know. And that's and that's all of our ancestors expect us to be. It's just good humans, wonderful humans, kind humans, and that's who we are. So, you know. Let's see. I think some more purism. Yeah. Yeah. I think that 
comes from having a very critical mindset, to be honest. Um, Cause we do see a lot of people that are like, Oh, Taino only and this, that, or whatever. And it's all from a very, a very colonial uh, mindset. Yeah, we definitely have to look at it, look at things in a very holistic worldview. Um, if we're not going to accept blood quantum, then we shouldn't be expecting, you know, people to expect, uh, you know, purism, right? All those isms, right? So, you know, you can't have one and then have the, you know, have the other or not have the other, you know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. So those kinds of things go hand in hand, those colonial type of rigid uh, mindsets. So like, you know, to have the colonial mindset is to be very rigid, is to have this top down mentality, this kind of like this pyramid, like, you know, very small at the top and the rest of us, in the, you know, like that, all that kind of stuff. And our people weren't really like that. You know, matter of fact, in some instances, a lot of times, and I and I did some reading with, um, especially with the Kalinago, our Kalinago relatives, uh, essentially, they didn't have uh, caciques unless it was time for war. It was more in the egalitarian society. So it was like everybody made decisions and everybody came in community and, you know, the adults had to say, you know, everybody had a say in what was happening and, and things of that nature. So, yeah. Many of them under work, Asika, didn't just, you know, run the show without, without, you know, consulting with anybody. A lot of the times they talk to their moms, they talk to their sisters, they talk to their abuelas, you know, they, they didn't just, oh, I'm the cacique, so I don't, ha I can make decisions that affect everybody without, without anybody's input. That's not, that's not how, that's not how things were done. Absolutely, absolutely. We're, we're past <laughs> I've been craving Kenepa for so long. You don't understand, y'all. I haven't had a Kenepa in forever. I saw, I think it, I think it was Bohio Trading Post or Bohio Trading Post who posted um, some Kenepas that from the bodega recently. And I was like, why can't Florida do that? New York is too far. <laughs> yeah, I haven't had a Kenepa since I was in, from, in the island. It's not where Casicas will consult people. Okay. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the Casique, see, the Casique, like, there's always a council of people. And a lot of, a lot of times, um, the Casique is like, they, again, they're, uh, many are appointed. Many were. So our idea of Casiques, um, you know, we have to just deconstruct that as well. Because when the Spaniards came over and they saw these folks in like plumes and all this stuff and they looked like they were, you know, uh, these point people, right? A lot of times these, a lot of these folks were elected point people. Sometimes they were just like the, the, one of the general leaders and so on and so forth. And they would say that they were, you know, that they kind of likened them to like European kingdoms or kings and nobles and, you know, like the whole thing, ni, ni Taino, right? So you have Taino, right? If Taino means relatives, right? What does ni Taino mean? Does anybody know? Anybody want to take a guess? If Taino means relatives or family, what does ni taino mean? It's a good guess, not related. Good guess, good guess. Well, see, ni is let me let me um let me then share this with you. Ni is actually a possessive. If you put it as a prefix, you got the answer. Oh, Ooh. there you go. Oh, that is my correct. relatives. That's right. Now, ni in the end. Like sometimes ni by itself, it means water, right? But ni as a prefix, 
me as a prefix is a possessive. So, so um, we also have to not think of language in our Indo-European like sense of language usage. This is a totally different family. So like one sound doesn't equal just one thing. So it, it, de it depends, these sounds depend on placement of where they are. So if, um, let's say ma, right? Uh, ma before a word means a negation. So it means not. So ma boya, right? Something not, you know, boya, not human, or not, not a spirit, you know, something like that. Um, if you put it at the end, it means many or great, you know? So that's like, um, people say a home, right? For, for thank you. I mean, it's, it's, it's different for, for different, uh, kinds of like Taino reconstruction. So a home for some people means thank you. So if you say a home ma means many thanks. Doesn't mean thank you, it means thanks. So a home ma is many thanks. So if you put ma in front, it's a negation. So um that makes sense. Said about about me. Um me is there's two different, I guess, branches of Arawak. There's me Arawak and then there's Ta Arawak. Taino spoke Ta Arawak. So my would be da, but if you are speaking in new Arawak, that's when you will see ni me my. So ni taino would be my family, but then you could say you know da taino or I, I can't remember which uh, other Arawak it is, but they say taino. I want to say it's why you, but don't quote me on that, y'all. Um, mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Um, and, and that's the thing. So now we see da, and then we say ni. So we see da, Arawak, and we also see nu Arawak in certain islands. So that means that we were already multilingual. <laughs> exactly. There were different, there were already different dialects of Arawak spoken throughout. And I want to say that it was argued that um, our language was kind of universal. That was the one that when people spoke it, everybody kind of understood it. Um, I might be not be 100% accurate with that. Nobody come for me. Um, I'm letting y'all know, take that with a grain of salt. Do your own research, please. But um, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the language our ancestors spoke was one that was kind of universal. And then there were obvious... Uh, different and whatnot. So, um, like our guys, they speak um, new Arawak. So they they will have words like niduhenyu, um, I believe, for like mm -hmm. I think my family. Niduhenyu. I think it's my. Nidu. Hold on. I think that's my might be my sisters. Might hold on. I'm about to pull up my sisters. Let's use the internet for what the internet is supposed to be used for information. <laughs> then we have um, yes, the Ayeti language. Yes, I think that the Ayeti language I think is New Arawak. Is is n, n u n awa, not new as in n e w, but n, n u, awa, and there's oh, it's da. Oh, sorry. My bad. I was saying it was idu henu for garifuna. That means family. Yeah. And then kalinago, it's nitinon, and why you? They have isha for blood. And Dayono is Lakono, not Wayu. Sorry. Right. So all of those mean blood, family, kin, relative, 
the people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. And um, uh, can you talk about the significance of the tree in our culture? Are you speaking about the Seba tree? I know the Seba tree um, is very important in our uh, creation stories and, um, and, you know, they were used like, you know, the Kanoa uh, were created out of the Seba tree. You said yes. He was talking about Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very strong saber tree. Saber. I am. Um... I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead. No, no, no. Lag. I was going to say that if you guys have YouTube, um, one of uh, pretty well known and respected elders, Miguel Sage, he has a YouTube channel where he basically tells funny stories. Um, and he like animates it on paint and I don't know how he did such a good job you paint, but he did it. And, um, the, the, I think he has like four different videos, but all together, it's all of the stories that, uh, Pane chronicled for anybody who wants to check that out and doesn't have a copy of this book. But again, um, it's not on Taino library cause I don't know about the copyright things, but I may or may not be able to help anyone who wants a copy um get their hands on one so just just email me or shoot me a message on Instagram. absolutely and um Biheke, um miguel sage is also a very good artist a very fine painter some of the early like if you were canvassing on the interwebs internet like back in like myspace days you might have seen some of his paintings uh, that represented um, the Taino like spirits and our ancestral spirits and elements and things of that nature. So you might have come across his work before you actually realized he was the one who created them. One of my favorite paintings of his, I believe, is like uh, is a Taino woman and she's got a maraca in her hands and yeah. like Demi like moon and Demi Nans in the background and there's like smoke going up. And I was just like, oh, it's so pretty. But also don't let Inaru Arts sell you short because art is in her name for a reason. She's also one of my favorite artists. <laughs> Indigenous um, art as well, which I think oh. is awesome. So check her out too. Thank you. Don't, add, don't let her act like she's not an artist as well. Oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, I always like to I always always like to incorporate uh a lot of the, you know um you know themes and of course like being Afro indigenous and working with you know navigating through that identity, you know. Because the majority of Taino people are Afro-Indigenous people, you know? Yep. And that's oh, something thank that you. not too long ago was, um, you know, people wanting to kind of tell you who you are, which is why it's so important to, you know, know your and talk to your family and be really grounded in who you are, because there's going to be plenty of people that are going to walk up to you and be like, oh, you're not black, you're this, or oh, you're not Taino, you're this, or, you know, basically what our ancestors went through, which was being identified as anything but who we are. And that's mm -hmm. a struggle that a lot of us still face today. So, you know, know who you are and stand firm in that truth, because, you know what I mean? People are going to People are going to try and take that identity from you and they cannot. It's a lot like education. Once, once it's, it's part of who you are, it's they, you know, that can't be repossessed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Your ancestors know who you are. Exactly. Your exactly. Your ancestors know who you are. 
day. Like, because a lot of people are like, I don't know my ancestors. I don't know their names, you know, especially if you happen to be somebody who was like adopted or you only know one side of your family, but you don't know the other so well because maybe daddy didn't stick around or something like that. You know, just because you don't know their names doesn't mean they don't know you, you know, you don't have to have a picture of them to, you know, stand at, at your ancestor altar if you happen to have one and talk to them and stuff like that. You know, that that's, I mean, it's good to have, don't get me wrong, but it's not like, oh, well, if you don't have this, you're SOS. You know, our ancestors were always really good at using what they had available to them to make whatever connections were necessary. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm sure we all grew up in households where there was a lot of ancestor veneration without them saying it was ancestor veneration. Yeah, like there's a shelf or something. There's an altar. A cabinet. A top, a cabinet, something on the dresser. Like there, there was something. You know, it might have, it may have been 12 different versions of the bead hang, but you know what I'm saying? If that's the purpose it served. That's what it was intended for. Absolutely. We'll have all the pictures of our ancestors, you know, and the the cabinet and the China cabinet. There's no China in the Chaba cabinet, but there's a lot of pictures. Yeah. How, and, okay. <laughs> How many people in their family, like particularly like in the older generation, have like a picture frame where it's literally a collage of everybody in your family and it just like takes up a wall where it's just... <laughs> everybody that could show up to the family reunion, there's a picture and they're like all clipped together in this huge ass collage in somebody grandma's house. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then you'll have, you'll have a whole bunch of, uh, you know, you, you know, of course you have your bowl of fruit and then you might have water I'm sorry. I'm sorry that was acting crazy on calls and it was acting crazy. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yep, bread over the door. You know what we, we uh our ancestors used to hang over the door? Um uh the bones of of someone who had passed that they venerated. They would hold in um in a gourd. That was one of our, yeah, that would be a funerary practice. I believe they said, like, specifically they were, like, long bones, usually. Um, like, on your, like, the long bone of your arm or of your leg. Yep. Hang up in a gourd somewhere. Yeah, we, you know, um, I was reading a, a in a book. Uh, I think I actually recommended it, and you posted it in Taino Library. But it, it's uh, about how our, the placements of our boil or buono, um, would be like facing, um, I think um, they face the west, right? And then they face the west and then the, the sleeping quarters were like towards the east. So you would sleep towards the east and it was like really interesting. And the west, the, it, the very front part of where you sat was kind of like a receiving area in the boil. And then underneath in the spokes and each spoke like represented, I think a month of the year. And it, it was really, it was like, so like, you have to read the book. You guys have to like, go, go scroll down in Taino library and look for that video, like, and get that book. I guarantee you. it's like, it's mind blowing. It's, it's an archaeological survey, but it actually shows like how our houses were situated and and things of that nature. And they found within the posts, uh, underneath the post, they found semi underneath the post of each of the posts of standing of the house. It's like really, really cool. Yeah. Focus Don't on renewing the house way, renewing the house. Yes. And that that's a good point. Not sleeping. There's a lot of cultures actually where they say, you know, you don't want to have a mirror over your bed. 
You don't mm-hmm. want to have your bed uh, face the bedroom door. You know, this mm-hmm. bad luck or something, you know, something's going to come grab your ass while you sleep and, and different things like that um, for spiritual reasons. Or like if you do have a mirror in your bedroom to cover it at night um, or anything reflective like it's a TV, depending on the kind of spiritual activity that may or may not be happening. Yeah, there's, there's reason for that. Yeah. So our ancestors uh, practice uh, something very similar. So if you were to read the survey, you would see some of the things. And of course, it's an academic survey. So they're going to say, oh, we found this, we found this, we found this. But looking through, uh, you know, uh, kind of like a decolonizing lens, you can actually see it's like, oh, my gosh, this is like mind blowing because this is what they were doing. They were arranging their house specifically in a certain way, you know, um, and each and each post meant something like facing a certain direction, like the main posts. So it's really cool. Like that, you know, just the energy <laughs> to work with post to. This does not bring joy. We're not house here. It's gonna go over there. <laughs> so it's a it's you know we're on Taino time. We have Taino fun, right? <laughs> we just Tainoizing every. Yes. Like everything that was untainoed, we're going to re taino it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about colonizers. Sorry about your luck. Absolutely. There was something you brought up here too that I was like, oh, we talked about that. We should elaborate. And then it, it just, Train of thought crack what it was that you were gonna talk of that, that you had said. Yeah, it's one of those things that, you know, like we were to, I think uh we talked about it in another time where you know we talked about uh you know oh our ADHD and all this other stuff and that was, that's exactly what it was. There you go. <laughs> Talking about the way our stories were told mm-hmm. and how it was sing songy and stuff like that. And it reminded me of that conversation that you, Water Vixen, and I had where we were talking about, you know, that helps um, that helps people with remembering things, you know, if it's because I know when I was studying as a kid, my mom would, you know, turn things into a song to help me remember for a test. So there's that, and then there's the, you know, people who are neurodivergent. Exactly. Like, like Water Vixen just put in the comments, you know, thinking in circles that these stories weren't told linearly. They weren't, they were, they were more of like a, a roundabout conversation where things kept coming back and the repetition of things, you know, for the sake, not just of memory, but maybe for clarity, like my ADHD brain went here, what were we talking about again? So then the elder would say that same thing over and over to kind of like instill that in your head. It's almost like spiral. It's almost like a spiral. We, we uh, spiral this way and then we spiral back, right? Mm-hmm. So we have that a lot of, on our petroglyphs, the spiral, that idea of circling back, right? So it's like multifaceted. ADHDs are not, you know, I honestly, I would not, be surprised if the if it if some study came out and it was like you know Taino people are neurodivergent as shit <laughs> that that would not surprise me at all at all no absolutely and there there is somebody that I think there was an article they were writing uh, that was written recently they were talking about how it's um you know, it's very colonial thinking. Like uh, what what we can deem as neurotypical is actually colonial mindset. It's colonial thinking. It's kind of like that very linear time and task forming and, right. I've noticed a lot of people in the community that are either, um, either have ADHD or are, 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 are blah, blah, blah are autistic or both, you know? So it's 
like, hmm, maybe something wrong with the, something wrong with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. You know, and and again, it's like circling through. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does make sense. It does make sense because it's like we were told that there's something wrong with us. Right. And that's why they set up all those schools. Right. Um, for for native youth and even for our our uh, children and especially like in the island. But again, like in 18 was it 98, uh, they figured that they were going to um, insert the American public school uh, into um, in Puerto Rico and uh, with the sole purpose of Americanizing, right, our people. Because if you look at some of their, the journals of the people who had um, initially, who had initially... Uh, you know, come come to the to the island of Puerto Rico and Cuba, and actually at around the same time it was like Cuba, Puerto Rico, Hawaii. You know, um, there were so many other. So there, they were um, disgusted, for lack of a better word, by how we maintained ourselves, how we did quote unquote business, like we weren't practical or what it would have you. And and uh, they wanted to school us into their way of thinking. Right? So it's very interesting. If you look at some of those uh, firsthand accounts of like the invasion, the 1898 invasion of, of the islands, uh, I think the, the book is... Um, our islands and their people. There's two volumes. Our islands and their people. You see that even that's colonial. Like even that like the title is like visceral. It's like gross, right? Very gross. You know. It's like really gross how they kind of like they talk about our recent ancestors and they talk about, you know, I think yeah, Cuba, I think um Cuba and and um Puerto Rico and one and the Philippines and Hawaii and the other volume. But it's it's very interesting. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Actually a lot um I've noticed this commonality of uh the Pleiades, the seven sisters. That's um, something that I feel like a lot of people, I've heard a lot of people mention like, oh, well, we're, we're from, we're Pleiadians, you know, or Pleiadians, however you're supposed to pronounce that. But um, <laughs> I've seen that a lot. One of those. One of, one of those. One of those. Someone will correct me. Be like, pendeja se dice esto. Okay. <laughs> My bad. Yeah. Yeah. In the language for practicing spirituality, different things that indigenous people throughout the world to deal with when they were when they were calling. There were other too. Um, I don't know how many people know this, but when, there was a point in time where the Spanish crown was like, oh man, Columbus is doing these people over there dirty. So there was a, a decree where people were no longer allowed to enslave um, indigenous people. So then that gave the like takers or whatever you want to call them incentive to then class- reclassify indigenous peoples again, as any other than indigenous, um, usually as black, so that they could justify enslaving them. And then mm. the paper genocide continued to happen with people just losing track of their of dying on because they were told, you're not this, you're that. Like how many, 
how many of us grew up being told to check white on a, on a paper or whatever because that's what was taught by your parents, by their parents and their, you know, parents, parents and all, all the way back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it is very frustrating, but, um, Oh, uh, there's a question here. Um, let me see. Uh, did the Taino, uh, use o, a and O gender separation? No, they didn't. Nope. If you, so if, see, the, the no or n, it was either no or n uh, suffixes, those were pluralizers. So those were pluralizers. We didn't use like um, that type of uh, gender se separation with our words. Yeah, most words are, were gender neutral. Yeah. I have thought of them listed as de color on documents. Probably, probably. Or they're like listed as mulato or mestizo. De That's color. what certain documents means. Um, or it'll just say indio or it'll say like Puerto Rican, but then Puerto Rico is spelled like P-O-R-T-O-R-I-C-O -T -T instead of the way we spell it now. I don't remember off the top of my head behind why the name the spelling changed or whatever but yeah yeah it's and, and the thing is have you guys um have ever been told that uh you were searching for your family records or something like that and you asked like your grandparents or like or your parents or whatever it's like oh you know do we have any family records and you know they said oh it burnt down the hall record the records Hall burnt down or something like and I'm like Earth when that was told down. yeah like when that was told to me I was like doing like a family uh tree thing for high school and there was like oh yeah all the everything burnt down you know that that ha held the family records and I said okay but then later on during my space era and we we're talking to <laughs> and they were like oh yeah you know our our family records burned down. I was like, "What? Yours did too?" And then I found somebody. Else. Yours did too. Like, and we're like different parts of the island, so it's very interesting. It's very interesting how a lot of these records were lost, or you know, these hall halls or these official places were burnt down, and and things of that nature. So it's interesting. Yep, it says here. The British burned a lot of records, including slave records, when they left Jamaica, yeah. And Trinidad, yeah. That doesn't, yeah. Surprise. That doesn't surprise me at all. And then when the U.S. Uh, came in and colonized Puerto Rico, they, they took land. They took land that a lot of us, you know, our families had passed down and um or that churches were on like family owned and built churches were on just took that land the navy said this is ours now and you guys can go over there yeah again um there's folks have benefited from uh there not being indigenous folks in a certain area they benefit from that because if they say, well, the original people aren't here anymore, so we could just take over and do whatever we want to it. You know, if, if you say that, because of course, you know, the UN uh, declaration of the rights of indigenous peoples, you know, we would fall, we will fall under that. So. That's why they, they wrote back to Spain and they were like, yeah, there's no more Indians here so that they could take, the land from from our people like they're gone now, but we can do what we want with it yep exactly you know what i've heard a lot of people uh post i've heard a lot of people say that same thing that like you know my abuela is this age but if you look at her birth certificate she's like two years young, two years older or something like that just completely remade the, <laughs> the birth certificate. Absolutely. 
And um, somebody just uh, post well posted a little while back. Uh, they said their their father was this is Indio. What is, what's the difference with Indio? Indio was just another way of saying native or indigenous. So um, and there there there's some people that were listed as Indio. Like if you would actually go into um, the military records, if you go into the the World War One or World War Two. Um, military records enlistment records um for people in puerto rico you will see that you will see um people listed as indio if you're from uh, the dominican republic you might actually even see it spelled y n d i o instead of i n d i o um because i know uh one of my tribal I'm not going to say which one, but uh, they basically, they had a parent's passport uh, from back in the day. One even that long ago. Um, and it said Indio right on there with a Y. Okay. Them have words like all kinds of jacked up, or they might have like one name here and then in the next record, they have a completely, it's the same person, but their name is different. Like it's spelled a little different or something like that, where, you know, you wouldn't, you're not even sure if it's the same person. But it, they, we weren't like now we fill out our own censuses, you know, our own census information. But back in the day, it was whatever the census taker decided to put. Yeah. Because my grandfather was listed as, as white and he was white. <laughs> that's what I. That's what I. He was not black. <laughs> Um, how do you feel about Puerto Rico, Puerto Rican nationals claiming Boricua just because they live on the island? Um, well, yeah, we, we talked about this a little earlier, Pal. I don't know if you were, you were on, but, um, Alba, did you want to address that? Yeah, uh, basically what we said was that, um, there's a difference between, uh, a national identity, as, as you specified there when you said Puerto Rican nationals and you're an indigenous identity of Boricua. So you can be Puerto Rican and Boricua at the same time, obviously. Um, but Boricua is definitely an indigenous identity and everyone Puerto Rican does not have uh, Taino ancestry, Taino roots. A lot of, a lot of Puerto Ricans do, but um, not everyone does. So I don't, at least it's my opinion, everybody's entitled to their own, but you know, it's my opinion that if you are not indigenous to the islands, then body not a descriptor for you. Right. Be Puerto Rican all day, but you're not. Absolutely, absolutely. Wow, this is a really good Wow, yeah. Going through comments here, but another thing that's a pain in the butt speaking through records is that everything is done, uh, you know, more or less the same, but also differently um, depending on what island you live on. You know, some places you might have luck, you know, going through the government, some places you might have more luck. Uh, going through like church records, some places their their military records may not um, be as 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 in other places or as well recorded and stuff like that. Um, and sometimes you just really have to know what to look for to even find um, the information you're looking for. You know, say. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's there's a lot of ways you might even have to go to the island and like search a church or something like that for like baptismal records, you know, things of that nature. Yeah, and it can be really hard too if the ancestor you're looking for happens to be a woman, because uh, there was a lot more. 
care given to, you know, uh, the men in the community, but uh, not so much documented as far as women. So if, if you have an ancestor that never married, so there is no church record and stuff like that, it can be that much harder to find them and learn more about them. And it's very interesting because a lot of the women were either um, indigenous Caribbean or African. So. Exactly. Exactly. So that's probably why you might not see a lot of records. They might not have been um, from certain families or certain some, you know, you might you might hit a brick wall. Um, are there any sources on the island that uh, someone can look into to find more about their lineage? I mean, I think there are records, but um, it probably would be best if somebody who lives on the island were to answer that. Definitely. I'm sure that there's, I'm Welcome sure that there's life. ways. Uh I know that there's people that specifically do genealogical research and help people find their ancestors. Um, I wouldn't know of any like, specific organization or anything like that, other than you know signing up for ancestry or uh, calling a record off and stuff like that. Not physically there, that going to be some some issues, you know. Maroon community. Yeah, don't, that's cousins. That's family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. There is a... Um... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Go ahead. Lag it again. But there is a... Um, there is a, a cacique in Jamaica. Maybe we can ask if he would like to join us in a live one day or something like that. It would be nice to have people from other islands yeah. to share and talk, definitely. So, um, Cacique Calan, uh, Pyramid. So, um, he's like he's really great. awesome. He's really awesome. He's really great. Uh, Yamie Taino Cacique. I think there was a, I saw in his, I think it was like in his Instagram, there was a celebration that happened in, in Jamaica and he uh, was asked to blow the uh, wamo. So that was really interesting. They did the season ceremony, didn't they? Yeah. So. If you have I and mean, when you look up Yangye Guani, um, you pull up the, uh, the Yukaye in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, uh, with the Maroon community there. Absolutely. I believe also, like um, on the Virgin Islands, they recently got. Um, some government recognition for Taino people after having fought for decades. Um, they're finally recognized by, um, by that, uh, well, they're not a state, you know, like that level of government. Unfortunately, there aren't Taino families yet, but, you know, that's all the because there's people on different sides of the fence when it comes to federal recognition. Absolutely, and um, which is really cool that the uh, the UN just recently, just last week, had called for President Biden to uh, increase efforts into talking to indigenous uh, communities and 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 everything, namely the Taíno, and he actually didn't mention the Taíno. So that was wow. really really cool. Yeah. I know I recently saw an article where he signed he signed something 
so that there would be more funds allocated um, to tribal peoples. Let me see if I can pull people. On action or anything. Yeah. That was a big deal because, you know, other people, you know, around the world, they see us, they, they know we exist, they, you know, and, um, you know, it's just the ones who are colonizing our islands, <laughs> they turn a blind eye, conveniently turn a blind eye, you know. Yep. And it's not just us either, because a lot of the times, you know, uh, Guam, the Mariana Islands, uh, U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, Mariana. There's a another five. Samoa. American Samoa, duh, yeah. that are all colonized, they're all still U.S. colonies. So when people are like, oh, that was so long ago, colonization is like, what you mean? There's people still colonized in 2022. Puerto Rico's the oldest colony in the world. What are y'all yeah. talking about? But no, that, you know, would change a lot minds i think i think that's why history is taught the way that it's taught because um you don't teach little kids that American exceptionalism when they grow older they can't die to certain things I don't know if there was anything else you wanted to talk about. I know it's starting to get late and we talked about like being on here for like one or two hours and I've kept you here like an extra 30 minutes. So I don't know if you're like, okay, can I go to bed now? No, no, no. no. This is like really great because like we have a lot of um, really great uh, questions today. And um, now it's... Uh, you know, I know that the topic was storytelling, but this is like our initial kind of like get to know you and everything. And so we can always get to that a little bit later, you know, in terms of like, uh, like sharing stories and sharing our like creation stories and probably, uh, you know, tell them in a way where it would be very similar to the way our ancestors would have told, uh, would have told them. So, but, um, but this is like a get to know you. It's kind of like the initial Taino talk. So yeah. I love it. Uh, that water vix, it couldn't be, couldn't come. So if y'all don't follow water vixen, please, please go and follow her. Um, I think right now she's only got like a hundred and some, 180, maybe close to 200 followers. And TikTok is a butt and won't you go live unless you have at least a thousand. So. I don't know why that, yeah, but that's a thing. And uh, uh, the Namai, the Namai um, says, my name is Taino, but can't find information on it. Um, were Tanama. you, uh, I'm sorry? Tanama means butterfly. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, right? That's what it sounds um, like. Yeah. It just has the I usually I don't see it with the I at the end, but yeah. It might just um, be like I, off of off of uh Tanama or Tanama rather. Yeah, it's Tanama, but um I did not I usually it's without the I, but yeah. Yeah, means butterfly. Um now Ali B says I have had a teacher call me into school because I would teach my daughter as much as I could. And they would, what was it? 
uh, they would have a problem with her saying the stories they tell of Columbus's fiction. Yeah, same, same. Um, my, my, uh, I have uh, my oldest child got in huge trouble. <laughs> she did one of those. Uh, <laughs> what was it? Uh, what was it? Uh, one of those baby Cardi B things. It's like my oh. mama said. My mama said that you's a whole liar. Yeah, I was like, Columbus is a bitch. And, you lie. <laughs> I was like, and that was like, that was some time ago. I have, I have my, my, my oldest child is an adult. So that was, that was a while ago, but yeah, she, she actually did that too. And she got in huge trouble. And it was a Catholic school too. So yeah, it was in an Italian neighborhood. So like, that's like, it was like, you know, but my kid, she's like, he's a whole lie. I was like, it's like, yeah, you right, baby. You right, baby. It's like my mama told me you're full of shit. <laughs> I don't know. Absolutely. And they do stuff like that all just twist history. But I know like uh, when, when COVID first hit and I was doing virtual school with my kids, um, my at the time third grader had a project where they were like oh you know you have to label certain parts of the Americas and talk about um, like there were just different things to mark on the map and it was of the Americas and it included the project was supposed to include the, the Caribbean but literally it was like the Bahamas and that was it on the map that they gave for her to do the assignment. I'm like, Puerto Rico isn't even on here. Where's Jamaica? Where's Cuba? Where's Dominican Republic and Haiti? You know, yeah. like how are we supposed to, how are you sitting here teaching kids about the Caribbean and you're not even including the islands on this map? Hawaii wasn't even on there and Hawaii's a whole state. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. It says here, uh, her, her and her friends walked out because uh, she said she had Taino ancestors and as a punishment, he made her write a report saying that Tainos uh, were responsible for the extinction. Okay. Um, wow. Who's this teacher? Cause, um, <laughs> that, that, wow. That's irresponsible. Mm. That's incredibly irresponsible. As, as an educator. Like, I've, I've been a teacher for quite some time. I've actually heard other people parrot that same sentiment, though, that, like, um, you know, it's the Taino's fault that colonization was successful and stuff like that. And it's like, where were y'all at when we were being colonized then? You know, when, when, they, when the Spanish were here kicking our asses and we were, you know, fighting them. Where were y'all at? Because we was fighting by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Well, not really by ourselves, but for the most part, by ourselves, you know? Yeah, we was fighting. I mean, the Calinago, um did help uh, Puerto Rico for quite some time, for about 100 years. They were keeping, like, the massive um, colonization of Puerto Rico at bay um, from the Spaniards for about 100 years. So the Calinagos were the first pirates of the Caribbean. So. That's what I'm saying. Like, Caribbean, we were looking out for each other, but like yeah. outside of the Caribbean, where was everybody at? You know, like y'all were dealing with your own BS and stuff like that. Understandably, you know, it's kind of like how it is today where the colonizer is able to continue to succeed because we're also, um, we're also busy dealing with like in-house issues that it's, that there's only so many so much as far as like spoon and time and energy and all that is concerned to really go into like of everywhere and fight like all these battles on all of these fronts at the same time. Whew, that's not that's not easy. Yep, that's right. We exist. That's right. I do have to uh oldest was telling today that their uh, history teacher is teaching them accurate history, which is a little surprising, to be honest, because I, I live in North Florida. It's a little, it's a little Trump land here, um, mm -hmm. but her, her teacher, um, their history teacher, uh, what is 
accurate history. I was like, who good? And I watched this video and they said all the Tainos were gone and I'm sitting there like, here. They don't see us? They don't see us. <laughs> yep. U.S. schools, yeah, every correct U.S. school system be like, let's arts and crafts native stuff, but not teach accurate history. That's, I mean, the U.S. is like one big gaslighting place. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it's like, look at like Disney, they Disneyfy everything, you know? They talk about the, the pilgrims and, you know, the story of the first Thanksgiving giving which is actually the thanks taking you know um there, there's a lot of unpacking that uh these schools need to do definitely use all the correct elements either and going to back to like the puritans and you know their buckle shoes and all that stuff from now on if somebody is like oh how come y'all don't dress and do this or whatever like they did back in the day just be like well where are your buckle shoes and top hats Where's yeah your, right your handmaid's tail outfit y'all don't <laughs> wear don't act like that y'all don't dress like that anymore why should we we don't exist in a vacuum either whereas ye old bustles and crinolines <laughs> ye old bustles <laughs> i'm just what saying, are they I mean, Flat like, like if walk around with headdresses, we're not real Indians. We're not, I don't understand, I really don't. Yeah, and then another thing that they like to do on, on here, like when uh, you have one of those colonizers come up in here and they, they say, well, if it wasn't for us, you know, you wouldn't have like technology. And it's like, <laughs> Are you ridiculous? Do you know uh, a black man was responsible for the cell phone? <laughs> I mean, like what? You know, it's like, things. you know, yeah, like the food exchange, like the resources and all this. Other, it's like, come on. It, there's so, a lot of those arguments are just so shallow, are so shallow. I mean, we it's no longer like what they didn't already know um, once they figured out, oh, look what we found. Look what we invented. Look what we figured out. And it's like our ancestors been knew that, like how much of science today is catching up to indigenous knowledge, to things that our ancestors and our elders have been saying forever. Now science is like, oh, you, maybe these people knew what the fuck they were talking about. You think? <laughs> these articles coming out like maybe we should look into indigenous systems it's like yeah well you know like thanks you know <laughs> climate change is here <laughs> or like let's stop the fires let's do some like controlled burns and you know some some slashing and whatever whatever it's like you realize aboriginal people have been doing that like that's that's what they were doing before y'all came in and yeah. hugged everything up <laughs> exactly. They did. Fires. Yep. Wow. We we we've uh, talked about a lot of topics today. This is wonderful. This is a great initial kind of. We talked about ancestry. We talked about. We talked about you know climate change. We talked about you know just kind of like. Um, our ancestors' stories and spirituality and honoring uh, our ancestors and veneration. And Definitely. There's so much to talk about. And, and everybody, please stay tuned because um, we're going we're gonna to get some guests and it's going to be really wonderful and fun. Yeah, there's a there's a video I think I posted where I tagged pretty much everybody that we have um, that we're hoping to have on as a guest. So um, for those who aren't already following those people, please do, especially those who don't have um, that thousand 
follower cap yet because we really would like to have people on. Um, yeah. I, uh, um, I have an alternate account. So if y'all want to go follow that one too, because then maybe we can make that like the guest account for people to log into, even if they don't have own. I don't know. We got to, we got to figure something out. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Have something for folks. Yeah, because not everybody, also, not everybody who, um, you know, would would be a guest have, like, they don't use, like, TikTok, you know, in, in you know, this way or, or whatever have you. So, but their, their, their input is just as valuable. So. I know a lot of our elders, you know, they're on Facebook. They're not trying to mess with TikTok or right? <laughs> Like that, you know what I mean? They're like, I don't know nothing about that, you know, or, or there's people that are on here that have very valuable things to say and add, but they only get on TikTok to, you know, look at funny animal videos and stuff like that. They're, not trying <laughs> to, they're like, I do enough work for the community as it is. I'm not trying to do all that on TikTok too. <laughs> I know. It's like... And it's one of those things that, you know, yeah, they're stuck on Facebook and it's it's just to get them on Facebook and initially. They, I mean, they, by the time they got into Facebook, we were already moved on. Right. <laughs> we were they, were, they, were still, they were still doing like the, the message boards and stuff on Ning. Now, you really old school if you know about the Ning uh, message boards. <laughs> Indigenous Caribbean Ning is actually still the Indigenous Caribbean Ning still exists. And I it is. I have a profile on there. That still exists. I probably have an account somewhere that is has a picture of a much younger me. <laughs> Without the chin. Without the double chin. Just one. I just only had one chin then. <laughs> I, I'm on the team too, though, so you're, you're not by team. <laughs> yeah, man, Facebook is so like can be such a toxic. I mean, you know, like at least TikTok at least has like you know you can see other people around the world, and it's like it feels like Facebook is like the same twenty people that's just going at each other. <laughs> it got to the point. Like when I was first, when I first came into the movement and I was wanting to connect other people, cause you know, you can't learn everything from a book. It's just, it's right. just not going to happen. Exactly. So you have to be with people. And, um, like I would just be asking questions and here come the groupies or whatever answering my question. And then this person don't like this person. So now they're at each other's throats. And I'm like, all I did, all I wanted to know was who the guys are in the community. And here y'all are turning this into a popularity contest. Like, what the hell? Right, exactly. We got, other, we got bit more important things to deal with. Exactly, exactly. And it's like, oh, my goodness. It's like everybody wants to do a one-up. It's, you know, I know more than you. And I saw this book. And I have these many books. And, oh, you know, it's like, okay, all right. Calm down. Let's just. Get back to the world. <laughs> They're super Tainos. I mean, good to get, it's good to get different perspectives, but, you know, there's a difference between, like, okay, well, here's the core of, like, Taino beliefs and whatnot, and then this over here is what our Yucayeca does and believes, but there's a lot, there's people out there that are like, what our people believe is what everyone should believe and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It's like, okay. And then when you ask them, like, well, where did you guys get that from? They're like, oh, well, one of our, one of our people had a dream, you know? And that's not to, that's not to anyone's spirituality either because I'd be having dreams and everything, but I don't expect to follow, for people to, to follow me unquestioningly because I dreamed a dream. You know? Yeah. And and nobody can question that because it's your dream. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's no like you can't question it. And and that's why you have to 
you, you know, and I, I invite people to question us. You know what I mean? Always do your own research. Don't even take what we say f- for face value. You know, because you might find something that we don't know, you know, and it's like there's a lot of really great research out there. There's a lot of indigenous researchers out there, indigenous Caribbean researchers that are that are up and coming archaeologists, anthropologists, historians, um, um, you know, and and even non taino indigenous historians and. Which is a, a good segue. You know, we might have uh, some special guests that are going to come in and talk about uh, Native history and and so on and so forth. So it's really important to kind of like own our own story and our own narrative, you know, and everything. However, we also can't say that it's my way or the highway because that's a, our people, our ancestors weren't even like that. Come on now. I mean, if we. If if we literally said Nitu and Ditu in the same village, we said it. We said my sister two different ways. I just said my sister in two different ways. Nitu, which is no Arawak, and then you have Ditu, which is Ta Arawak. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, if we said things in multiple ways, if we had multiple different perspectives, then you know our ancestors did. Then why can't we? And that's the thing. I mean, yeah. Is there like, you know, uh, specific, something specific to the indigenous Caribbean, like spirituality? And so, of course, yes. However, if you say, if you have to always beware of absolutes, and that's with yes. anything in life. Yeah. Always beware of the, where all of our people were this, or all of them were that, or, you know, they you know, never, we can't, they never did yeah. that. We never had female caciques. We never, it's like, come on, man. Like, okay, you were there. You know, it's like, we, you, you're taking the word of, you know, some 16th century guy oh. that came, just just came out of the Inquisition. Not just that. Where's the cod piece? These people were incredibly patriarchal. They were incredibly homophobic and all of this, like the antithesis of indigeneity. And that's who, that's who you want us to listen to unquestioningly. Sure. We'll do that. Get right on it. Wow. And Martha is saying, um, uh, I'm writing my thesis on Obia. Uh, I spent a section talking about the influence of Taino people. Yeah, definitely. We need we need ac- our own academics. We need our own folks that are talking about our own experiences and our own ancestors. You know, so that's wonderful. And the way we get that is we have to talk to our youth. We have to teach our youth. We have to, you know, inform them. You know, and form others too. Our diversity definitely needs to be each other, um, but for sure, other indigenous peoples as well. Because I know that there's a lot of um, there's a lot of confusion with regard to our history because of that false information that gets taught in school. Um, like other natives know, like this isn't the whole truth, but they don't necessarily know our truth. Um, I know that there have been horror stories of that, you know, people going to powwows and getting treated like dirt. Um, oh, yeah. Indigenous peoples, like y'all aren't real or whatever. So, you know, we're not just um, asserting ourselves in colonial spaces. We're having to say we're indigenous to other Black indigenous people, too. So it um, it can can feel very invalidating it can get to the point where you're just like man i feel alone i want to give up you know stuff like that but um you're not alone please don't give up and um you know we are here. we're here we're here you have community you have support you know and and you know there 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 are those of us who have been i mean like 
in this for quite some time and have seen a lot of microaggressions, experienced a lot of microaggressions from like all everywhere, you know? So yeah, definitely. So definitely, you know, we're still here. We're still here. Our ancestors endured so much more, you know? We could do it too. Definitely. Absolutely, yep. there were female leaders. Um, and the, the, the alpha male, my husband's over here mimicking me. He said, absolutely. Um, but yeah, there were definitely a uh, female, casi que no. Um, and it's just never, usually men uh, make that argument. Because it's like, really, a matriarchal people, matrilineal people wouldn't have had female. That doesn't make that doesn't even make any sense. Come on now. Even the colonizers wrote that we had, you know, female leaders and some people are like, oh well they, they were just making it up or they were just they were doing that on purpose, you know, to make our men feel bad. It's like no. What do you like look at it's native crazy. communities just look at native communities and indigenous communities throughout the world. Like there's women leaders, there's femme leaders, <laughs> you know, I mean, even Chanka himself, who was again, the person that these machistas like to quote, even he said it like, yeah, there were female. And that's the guy that they like to, they like to quote, you know, Oh, he, they did this and they did that. Like Chanka believed that um, members of the LGBT, LGBTQ community, specifically uh, gay men, were used to emasculate other men. That that's what that's what sodomy was for. Where the hell did he get that? Just and and there's there's folks in our community that that like to quote him and you know what I mean? Like, like as if it was gospel. And again, that's one of those things, those Christianizing absolutes. You got to watch colonizers in Taino clothing for sure. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Return of the, the matriarchy. Yeah. Land back, matriarchy back. Ceremony, back, star knowledge right. back, all the things back. Yeah, Mother. clan mothers had more, yeah. Exactly. There was, I mean, even today, go walk into uh, go in go walk into a Caribbean woman's house and, and see how far you get trying to run shit. I, I mean I don't know about you, but I always call it Abuelita's house. I didn't say, I never even thought of saying Abuelitos. Exactly. It was Abuelita's house. You know who, you know who run, what was that quote from my big fat Greek wedding where she was like, um, the man is the head, but the woman is the neck and she can turn it however, which way. Yes, queen. That is exactly it. It was always Abuela's house. <laughs> Or if you said abuelo, it's abuela in abuelo's house. Yeah. Abuela first. My my thankful my grandfather was pretty smart when it came to that. He always deferred. <laughs> All you heard was the C. <laughs> that, that was it. <laughs> you know, you didn't protest. That's it. Whatever my grandmother said went. Yep. Society, exactly. Exactly. And a lot of times you see um, the issues with regard to like the male wanting to. How do I? With the toxic masculinity thing that, you know, mm -hmm. they have a lot of times stuff like that it's because of that disconnect with with matriarchy it's because yeah. of this colonial mindset where 
Um, just like humanity sees themselves above nature when we're all, when it's all together, it's the same thing with these, if we're speaking in the binary that, is, um, with the, with the man above the woman, nah, it's together. You know what I'm saying? Like, who was it that's earlier? You know, the is Rodney, um, that the caciques would defer to, to their mothers, to their sisters, to their abuelas. Like they didn't just you know, make a decision and not consider anybody else or, or ask for input or anything like that. That's dumb. You know what I mean? If you want to make a right choice, you're going to go talk to people who are wiser than you. You're going to talk to people who, who you, whose opinion matter. A lot of the time, that's our mamas. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, no. That's another thing kept is the not husband's last names. I don't know if that's consistent throughout the Caribbean, but I know for a fact in Puerto Rico, they don't do that. You, you get married and you keep your family name. Definitely. Okay, Martha says, uh, I've noticed that men from matriarchal cultures, including my father, are much kinder. Man, I, I tell you, my widow man, he, like, uh, my grandmother was the one who was a disciplinarian, and she was, like, very strict. I'm okay. We'll sit there crying to you know, feel like it's ice cream. It's like, oh, come sit down. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, but he still. I mean, he still did stuff around the house. Like he, you know, he he fixed the car. He, you know, he went to work, came back, you know, got the food, you know, and all that other stuff. You know, he watches wrestling. <laughs> you know, but still, you know, it it's. When my when my grandmother was fell ill and was sick uh, during her her last last years, uh, you know he was the one cooking and cleaning after her. So, you know, wow. always the one cooking. He was a literal chef. So you know, yeah. and my uncle he's that way. You know, you cook too, you clean too. One of my uncles, as a matter of fact is is the one who does the majority of the cleaning you know because he you know really pretty sneaky like that um but yeah it, it, like the roles were under you know uh, that, that's more of a, a colonial thing um it says here my family's from um Fajardo and my sister raised her kids on the other side uh, why is there so much colorism? I mean, the colorism, racism, all this other stuff. That all that all that is is residue from um, colonialism. I mean, that's that's just the residue. It's it's because it's like you know you favor the kids with the lighter eyes or the lighter hair, or the lighter skin, you know, and you know that happened in in some families. In some families, it was that way you know and again that's it's because of co colonialism i mean it happens up here too colorism like the i know the you know the paper bag test or what would have you you know like if you don't marry somebody darker than a paper bag you know like that kind of thing i mean that happens everywhere that does happen everywhere everywhere there's a um western colonial society definitely yeah, there were people that, were, you know, white passing the origins of that term is with the black community because there were people who could, who had lighter skin and whatnot, and they could move to a different town and nobody knew them. Nobody knew who their parents and, and grandparents and whatnot were, and they could just play white. And, you know, that was 
them. There was privilege in that open doors. It provided safety. Um, so it's it's a very similar in the Caribbean and in other parts of the world where that proximity to whiteness is something that people strive for because of not just the privileges, but the safety that it offers. Right. Ten o'clock. Yeah. So we was on here a whole hour longer and I could I could really talk to you like forever. Um <laughs> but I know like my kids are like, give you a hug and I'm like, no, stay off camera. <laughs> I know. I so, like, um I had to lock my door. My old my middle kid was like <laughs> And and don't feel bad, guys. My middle kid is actually an adult. My middle kid is twenty. <laughs> but it's like, Mommy, yes. He's like knocking on the door. Good night, mom. Like, I'm busy. No, just, mommy time. This is mommy space. And I'm not on the phone when y'all don't care. But as soon as I'm on the phone or on the live, now y'all want to talk to me. Now y'all want to hang right? out. What's up with that, kids? <laughs> like, oh, my kid does have a life. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, well, well you, you know, you, you all have a very good night. Thank you so much. And, yeah, you know, um, the colonizer does have yes, to be stopped, sure. you know. Colorism is, is a terrible thing. But yeah. yeah, we have that on the on the schedule things that we want to, you know, um, talk more at length about. So just uh, whenever we announce our next live, we'll let you guys know and all of that good stuff. I hope everybody has a good night. And um, I did re hopefully TikTok didn't mess me up. And this is recorded. So, uh, if if TikTok didn't mess me up, I'm gonna post the recording onto YouTube for anybody who came in late or wants to see it and wasn't able to join in today. Yeah. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Bye.